All right. Can we move to the West? Mm-hmm. We may. What do you got in the West, boss? I got the Astros, obviously. I mean, come on. They, they, uh, Tim said the Yankees are the best team in baseball. Did you say that earlier? The Yankees are the best team in baseball? Or could be? Could be. I think you're bugging. I think it's the Ast- I mean, Astros by hard far. Hard to argue that. Like, <laughs> Correa, Altuve up the middle is definitely the best one, too, in the league. And then they bolstered their rotation with a full season of Verlander, who they got last year at the deadline, and then Garrett Cole, <laughs> another ace. You know, so they're loaded. They still, Lance McCullers back in the rotation. They're... They're stacked anywhere yeah, you look, they, up, up and down. They didn't really lose any significant piece. I, th- and I, I think I, they lost a significant piece in Lou Gregerson. I, agree. I will I say that because Ken Giles bummed it in the postseason big time. Um, he was fucking god-awful. He was coming in, giving up runs. every Pretty much every appearance you saw Ken Giles come in, you felt like you had a chance late in the game. So I'm kind of suspect on their bullpen, but I like what they have you know, everywhere else. That's just like nitpicking. Ken Giles just could still be a top closer in the game. I feel like with Garrett Cole, him coming over, remember how a lot of people thought that Verlander was shot going into that trade, and then he goes to Houston, and he goes from being on a team that's one of the worst teams in baseball to one of the best teams in baseball, yeah, and you saw right away he just took off. So I could see something like that being similar with Garrett Cole. Yeah, and, and as a number three starter, too, he doesn't have to yeah, show the, the burden. He, yeah, he's not the, it doesn't have the pressure of being the ace. Right. Yeah, I hope the Astros are really good because I got McCullers and Keiko on my fantasy team this year. So <laughs> nice. I'm banking on them, racking up a ton of wins. Because that's how I play category. So I, wins is a category. And, you know, they both strike out. Well, McCullers does a ton of yeah. guys. So, Do you guys know what their um, contract situation is with some of their key players? Is there anyone that's due? Like, is this a team that we might see the same core going forward for three, four more years? Because if it is, I know they do have a lot of young guys. They have a lot of young guys. And not only that, they're not paying anyone. So did they just re-up Altuve? Besides did, Altuve. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you could see them re-upping all their guys. You like could see that. Like, George Springer. Like too, Brian who, McCann is making more money than almost everyone besides Altuve. Because, and that's and they straight. traded to pick up pick up that contract. It's not like they signed him to right. the deal. So, I mean, I could see the Astros being able to re-sign a lot of these guys. Yep. In terms of the, there's not a lot to not like about the Astros. Like, the Astros are going to win this division. And I think that you could, even the most casual fan can say that they're going to win it pretty handily. But... I really think the Mariners have a chance to make some noise this year. And yeah, I know I said that last year. Wild card team. Oh, it was? I got, I got the Mariners. Yeah, I, li- I like the additions of D. Gordon. You know, instead of, he's never played center field in the majors, but he's such a speedster like Byron Buxton who can cover a ton of ground. So I like, you know, if he can catch, you know, he'll pre- pretty much catch anything in his range. His arm might be a different story, though. So we'll see how he fares with guys taking an extra base on him or something like that. But I like that addition. I think Ryan Healy at first base to replace Yonder Orlando. I agree. Dude dude is so young, and the athletics kind of gave up on him. He only His first big full year in the majors last year, he hit 28 home runs. So they found a nice power source there to fill in with uh, Nelson Cruz. Definitely agreed. And uh, I, the key for them is just having James Paxton healthy and Felix Hernandez healthy. If they can stay healthy without the rotation, I know Felix Hernandez is getting old and his numbers have dropped the last like three or four years now but he can still be that top two of your rotation type pitcher to put a good team in the playoffs i think with the mariners they're getting the sense that the window where the king felix robinson cano nelson cruz like trio can be that core that wins you a championship i I really think that they're seeing that window close this might be the last year for that window especially because king felix has kind of been taking some steps back but they noticed and they put a lot of pieces together around that, like you said. And also, Gene Segura coming back. He he showed his worth last year. Uh, Kyle Seager continues to get better. I think James Paxton might have, might end up being the best ros- pitcher on the roster at the end of the year. And he might challenge for, sure. for a Cy Young. He might, yeah. Like his, sure. his stuff is ridiculous. And he put it all together last year. If I wasn't making a bold prediction with the White Sox... Like I would be picking the Mariners to make them my second wild card, but I, I just I, I have a feeling the White Sox are going to make that push, but I expect the Mariners to be in it until the last day of the season, and then just kind of miss out. But I would not be surprised if the Mariners win a wild card. Yo, they also got my guy Ichiro tapping into the fountain of youth. Let's get it. You might start in left field because right uh, ha- no, not Hanniger. Hanniger's in right field. Ben Gamble's hurt to start the year, so he might start. You he, know, he's out for like a month. Prospect, right? Ben, ben Gamble, Gamble, yeah. I remember yeah. playing him on Fanduel. He would have the Yankee hat on, and yeah. I picked him one time because he was starting. And in, in in DFS, you want to take guys that are batting at the top of the lineup because they get more at bats, so you get more value there. And he was the leadoff hitter. He had two home runs. I was like, "That's my guy now." <laughs> he had a really good first half of the season. I, he did I have a good year. It's, it's going to be interesting to see if he can really extend it because he had a little bit of a poor second half yo i gotta ask about otani right and the angels i feel like they made a, a couple of nice moves they they put some good pieces around trout probably the best player in baseball uh cozart 
um, Kinsler, Justin Upton, and then Otani. What do you do with Otani if you're playing fantasy? I know, I know, we're not a fantasy show, but we do like to dip our tip in it every now and then. So I got two drafts coming up the next week. I was gonna say, so, you, but, you I'm, but I'm at two, but two I'm, drafts coming. My question is: Is he playing just pitcher, just hitter? Can you draft them twice for each, or are you making them just one player for utility? Nah, so like on on Yahoo anyway, like in my league, I just had my draft last weekend. It, there's a pitcher Otani and there's a a hitter Otani. Mm, okay. So there's two Otanis, okay. which is weird. And I don't. You said that's Yahoo. Yeah. So do you know of any other leagues if it's just I one don't. player? And uh, and do you have to draft either both of them? No, you like you could draft. I could draft pitcher Otani. You can like draft hitter Otani later in the draft. Oh, so what okay. happens if he hits a home run? Then and he's pitching. Nah, you don't get. Yeah, you, hit, don't get you don't get. You never get stats for your pitcher. Like bad oh, stats for your pitcher. Oh, that's trash. I would have took nah. Paulo Zambrano. Matt yeah, but then he'd, <laughs> kill, <laughs> he'd kill your average, though. Nah, yeah, for sure. So that's why you can't have that. Is he I, def- definitely for sure hitting? I don't know. I, for from what I'm hearing, they want to like his main purpose is pitching. For if I'm the Angels and I don't know, and I signed this guy and I spent all this money to sign him. Why wouldn't you try him two ways? Yeah, I, I mean, I would. I know it's early, but like he's looked overmatched at the plate. He has uh, in spring, so people are kind of cooling on him. But there's also been, you know, articles I've read that saying he's not a big spring player. Like early in the season, like you know, whatever, whatever they, I guess they do spring training in Japan too. But they said he always starts slow. So mm-hmm. we'll see. I mean, it, it takes time. You no, know, big league talent is still big league talent. It's different from anything you see in Japan. It's the best of the best, so it, it's going to take time, I think, for an adjustment. Um, but his pitching stuff, he has that stuff to be a nasty front of the end rotation guy, and that's what they signed him to be. So I know the Angels don't have much of a farm system. They've they've been in the bottom of the barrel for a while now since Trout's been in the majors. So getting Otani for them, I think, was huge in terms of their future prospects. Let's not forget they also signed in a completely new up the middle. Zach Colzard and Ian Kinsler are both coming in. Uh, Justin Upton they got last year, but he's now playing a full year they with the Angels. Him, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so like they won again. The Angels win the world, win the World Series of the off season. You know, but I just need to see it all come together before I could trust the Angels because the Angels. It seems like every year the Angels make some kind of splash in free agency and they get the big name, whether it's Pujols or whether it's Upton or whoever or Otani, whoever it may be. They always get this big name that comes in and it's supposed to make this impact and kind of never works out. So I definitely want to see what the Angels could do before I get there. I, I do like Garrett Richards this year, though. I think he's going to be a good player. I didn't stay healthy, though. Like, yeah, he's yeah. got to stay the last two years, pretty much. Yeah, so. I remember watching that game against the Red Sox where he got, I don't know if someone stepped on him when he was going to cover first, when he first got hurt. Yeah, his ACL, right? Yeah, yeah. blew out his knee. How are you guys feeling about the Rangers this year? They've been a perennial contender in this division for a while. I mean, they have the offense, but they're yeah. pitching kind of like you have Cole Hamels as your ace. It's like it's 2018, dude. They also got my boy, <laughs> Doug Fister. Doug, best One of the name in the game. Fister on the, the back of a jersey so hard. <laughs> Dougie Fist. <laughs> but yeah, their they're bullpen's also a mess. Yo, Tim, big time Timmy Jim, back end. You, you know you're in, you're in trouble when you have... Tim Lincecum and Bartolo Colon on your team, and it's not 2009. Well, Colon, <laughs> Colon got, Colon got, got cut. cut. Yeah. Okay. They're they, trying to renegotiate right. him to a minor league deal, though. Okay. Yeah. You you would guess he's staying with the Rangers. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. I feel like we'll he see. always has suitors, but no one wants to start him anymore. He used to, they, like, they just want to use him in the bullpen. Crazy. Yo, he's a great guy to have on your team in terms of like veteran leadership. He could tell a, a million bajillion stories to... Those young guys out in the bullpen for seven innings. I'm a Met fan, so I know I know the value he could bring with that. Yeah, it's just he was old two years ago. Yeah, his performance doesn't match his veteran. Yeah, exactly. Savviness. Oh,